In 2015, Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn gave a prophetic warning to America regarding Baal. A year later, that word has become reality, but Kahn says it all began on 9-11. Take a look. Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn is known for his best-selling novel, The Harbinger. He compared the United States to the destruction of ancient Israel. His teachings, which are known for revealing the deep mysteries of God's Word, are broadcast around the world. In his devotional, The Book of Mysteries, Jonathan takes you on a one-year journey to mountaintops, caverns, and the oil-lit chambers of scrolls to uncover secrets that he says will change your life. And Jonathan Kahn is here with us right now to talk more about these uncertain times that we're living in. Thanks a lot for joining us today. A blessing to be here, always. Talk about this Arch of Baal in New York City and what has happened. Yeah, well, the harbinger, the template is that a nation is warned by God, but the nation of Israel happened in the last days. They were warned that the harbingers or signs appeared and they turned away from God. They got worse. But as they were, they headed to destruction, but they were worshiping the god Baal. Baal is sort of behind the times of the harbingers. So now it's happening in America. The harbingers are revealing that parallel that these same nine harbingers have appeared warning America that it's, that it's going uh, rapidly accelerating from God. But the question is, could the sign of Baal, therefore, manifest on American soil, which is a sign of apostasy, a sign of a nation that has turned away from the God it has known. And mm -hmm. it's actually the God they offered their children up to, where they called evil good, where they persecuted the righteous. That's what happened in ancient Israel. Well, happening in America. So the question is, could it appear? The, and it'd be crazy, for, because nobody really even brings up Baal. But mm -hmm. it happened. The sign of Baal has appeared on American soil. And it just happened within this last month, in September. It appeared on, in New York City. I went down there to, uh, to witness it myself. Um, it was the, it, here's the arch that led the worshipers of Baal to worship Baal in the temple of Baal from Syria. And so, no, but it wasn't introduced in New York as this is Baal here. It well, was introduced well, under there, other names, well, right? Or, well, there's actually, and you may have a, a spot, there's actually, there was actually a plaque right by the arch that temple of Baal. Well, Baal is Baal. Oh, okay. Baal same God. Okay. Same God. So they, and they're not saying we're worshiping this, but that's what they did. So here you've got an arch devoted to Baal, I mean the God, the anti-God of the Bible, you know, and happening of a posse happening in America. The the deputy mayor of New York was speaking and she says, in front of her, she says, We're doing this as an act of defiance. Now this is in the Harbinger completely. And in the Harbinger talks about the people saying we're gonna rebuild Israel when, when they were attacked, said and this is the warning sign, said, We're gonna rebuild what was broken, and it was broken by the Assyrians. Well, this arch was destroyed last year by ISIS, who are the Assyrians, in the land of Assyria. So we're literally fulfilling the harbingers and putting up this, the sign of a nation that America is the nation that has known God, has been t falling away from God, and turning to other things. It's calling evil good and good evil, persecuting the righteous. This is a dangerous, a danger sign. But New York City is saying they're putting up this arch to defy ISIS, right? That's right. Oh, that's right. So on but the so surface, most people would say that's oh, fantastic. Of course, of course, but so, so did ancient Israel. Ancient Israel was attacked by Assyria and said, we're going to do this, we're defying Assyria. But they were defying God too because they were saying, they were saying is we're going to come back stronger, greater without God. And that's what happened. And now, and, and of all things to put up, I mean, think about Baal. I mean, America. You know, this is now, we're fulfilling even that part of the matching thing to ancient Israel. Mm, wow. Well, um, your previous book was called The Mystery of the Shemitah. Shemitah. Thank yes. you for pronouncing it for me. No it was about a major economic downturn. Um, are you still seeing that? Well, first of all, yeah, what happened, I always warn, and it's in the book all over that, you can't put God in a box. He doesn't have to do something every time at that time. Be, be warned both ways. But what happened in the year of the Shemitah it was the worst year for the stock market since the last meet of 2008. It was the first time it finished in the red. It was a global economic collapse of trade, first time since the Shemitah of 2008. It was it produced 20% of the worst stock market crashes in world history. Um, it, it, it was the worst year for making money in 78 years since the Shemitah of the Great Depression. So all there were tons of things happening throughout, throughout. And we have never even gotten out of the other Shemitah, which paralyzed the world economy, we have not grown at any rate since then. So, I mean, so the effects are still there. Uh, what am I expecting? It's in God's hands. But it happened, it, ma it didn't have to manifest, but it did again. It mm. manifested again. Wow. Now, your newest book, we've got it here, uh, it's called The Book of Mysteries. Um, tell us about yeah. what you mean by mysteries. Yes. 
Well, mystery is something that's hidden and it's revealed, you know, or, or it, it is now revealed in God. Uh, the Book of Mysteries, if the Harbinger is the opening up of an ancient mystery, the Book of Mysteries is the revealing of literally hundreds of the mysteries of God. What I believe are some of the greatest mysteries of God, the mysteries of heaven, the mysteries of the end times, mysteries of our lives, um, mysteries of the rabbis, hidden right. So it's all mysteries of that. So what, some of the, what I believe are some of the greatest mysteries of that. And many of the mysteries, have, as far as we know, have never been, have never appeared before. So, uh, so that's so it's revealing these things. And what I did is I took the format of the Harbinger. In the sense that I was led to do it, that there's a narrative. A man goes into the desert, meets a man called the teacher. The teacher takes him on this journey for one year on mountaintops, ca caves, secret chambers, and every day he opens up, reveals another mystery of God. Every day. So there's 365 mysteries. So you can read it right through, but also you're taken on this journey. But you can also read it every day. It can become a devotional, unlike other devotionals. Mm -hmm. That every day you're getting a mystery of God. And, mm -hmm. and but ultimately, ultimately, my my point, my 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 burden is that I believe we're going to have very challenging times ahead, believers. And so I want to strengthen believers that they, we be strong. That it's not just getting blown away by the mysteries of God, mm -hmm. but to apply it. And there's things in there that to become strong. And actually, I'm hearing it just it just came out. We were talking before the show, but I'm hearing people who are not saved are getting saved. So that that's my greatest joy. That it's changing lives. Mm, right. Now, one of the mysteries that you talk yeah. about is the mystery of God's name. Yes. So tell us about yes. that. Yes. In the book, the teacher says to the teacher, you know, it's telling the student the, the sacred name of God, and the student never heard it before. And he's saying, no, you say it all the time. And so what do you mean? If I say, I'm Jonathan, you say, I'm whoever, you know, I'm Heather. You. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get a chance. To do it. So, <laughs> so you have to say the name of God. Every time you say, if I say, I'm Jonathan, you say, I'm Heather. You have to say, I am first. That's right? the name of God. You cannot say your name. When you say that, you have to first say the name of God. And what because that your existence, my existence, you only exist because God's existence. So I have to say, I am first. And so I have to put him first, too, when I say that as well. So the thing is, even if I say, I'm sad, I have to put, I am, he's with me in that. If I say, I'm alone, I'm saying, I am alone. Even when I'm alone, God is with me. If I say, I'm in sin, I am Jesus is the I am. He came and became one with me in sin, so I'm not even alone there. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that the, 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 the key is to take this, to take this, is that, you know, we think of living for God, which we must do, living to God. But we, the mystery, the secret is to live from God, because mm -hmm. from I am, that when you, whatever you do, I live from his living. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the, I love from his loving, whatever, mm -hmm. I am in his I am. That's mm -hmm. the secret of life. Mm -hmm. Wow. I uh, wanted to ask you, too, about the mystery of the bride and oh, the groom. I love, I love this one. And, and uh, no, like something like what I just said before is one of hundreds of mysteries. There are hundreds, but there's also streams of mysteries in the book. that they, There's one mystery that keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. To, so in the book, there, there's the mystery of a marriage. You actually are witnessing a marriage in the desert from the time of, like, the, time of the Bible. This has an incredible mystery, and that is this. In the times of the Bible, the marriage went like this. In order for there to be a wedding... The bridegroom had to make a journey from the, his house, the house of the bridegroom, to the house of the bride, no matter what. So he would journey to her house. There he would pledge his life and his love. And then he would have to offer up a treasure for her called the Mohar. And that would set her free. If she said yes, they're considered husband and wife. But then they have to separate. He goes back to his house. They're separated for over a year. They're, she prepares for the marriage, saying goodbye to her childhood house. He prepares a house for her, and then the wedding day comes. He's dressed up like a king, and he, there are torches and, and a great procession. He makes one more journey with a celebration, this time to take her home. He mm -hmm. comes. She's waiting like a queen. They see each other. They're lifted up on the sedan chair, carried away from her house to his house. She finally sees the house that was prepared for her, that she only dreamed about. They come in. They become one. What's the mystery? God is the bridegroom. We all are the bride, or we're born to be the bride. But for the mystery to happen, the bridegroom has to make a journey from the, his house to our house. So 2,000 years ago, the bridegroom makes the journey of the bridegroom. God comes down to earth. Wherever we are, he comes to our house. And he, he gives himself, not, not a, a price, the, the bridal price is his life. That's the mohar, it sets us free. Then if we say yes, we were joined, but then he goes back. The bridegroom has to go back. So he says, I have to leave. So now is the time of the separation. We're to prepare to get ready for the wedding. But then the day will come when he will come. The bridegroom comes one more time, but this time in glory as a king. And he's going to come not to make a pledge, but to take us home. Mm -hmm. And so whether we're there for the coming or we're going, we're leaving this life, 
He's going to take us home to the place we have only dreamed about, the house of the bridegroom made for us, and for the first time we'll be home. It's such a powerful image. It we is. do have a question from a viewer. Yep. We're on Facebook sure. Live right now, of That's course. It. And the viewer is asking about the breakdown in the U.S. relationship um, with Russia and how does the Book of Mysteries give more depth to what we, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. we can, we yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, first of all, I mean, we are in, we are in dangerous times all around. I mean, and so the, the breakdown is, is all part of that. Um, the Book of Mysteries also has a lot of the a lot of end time mysteries about what's happening right now. And the, the other thing it does, I we bring is, is that it, it brings out things that you would never see in English ever, but they're in the Bible. Example: we, we talk about worship in the Bible. The word for in is pros, proskuneo, which means to kiss. What is worship? To kiss God, <laughs> to mm. be kissed by God. Mm. Another one in the Hebrew, you never know it. Isaiah 53, it says, it's a prophecy of, of, of Messiah's death in, in Isaiah. It says, in his death, but in Hebrew, it doesn't say that at all. In Hebrew, mystery, it says, in his deaths. He didn't die one death, he dies many deaths, all our deaths. And it, what it's also saying in Hebrew is that what he died, the word death cannot even contain it, is so big what he did for mm. us. Another quick thing with that is the word for mercy, God's love. In Hebrew, you can't say that really God has mercy. It says he has rachamim, which is not mercy, it's plural, he has mercies. Mm. The, the, way, the, the, the word for sin is singular, our sin, but the word for his mercy is plural. It means no matter how, mm. much, how much sin we have, his mercy is so much greater, there's no end to it. That's why we have eternity, because that's how long it takes to know the love of God. Mm -hmm. That's just some, but it's filled with, it's filled with things you would, you would not see in English. You couldn't, mm -hmm. and it's, yet it's there. It's amazing. That's really powerful. And I was thinking, too, when you were talking about marriage and the bride and groom, yes. it's interesting that our nation right now is fighting over marriage and what it means and the definition. And, and here you have another reminder that it is so central in the to Bible. Totally. And I'm, I'm going to throw this in. It wasn't planned. Throw this in. That, that there's a, one of the mysteries about the end times is the word apostasy. It says there'll be a great falling away. But the original word holds a secret. Apostasy doesn't just mean the falling away from faith. Apostasia also means departure from the state of being. So what happens in the same day that you see a falling away from faith, which we're watching, you're seeing falling away from men departing from the state of manhood, uh, women to start departing from the state of womanhood, marriage from the state of marriage. This is this is the other part. It's all there in the in the word from the Bible. Mm -hmm. What's happening? What we're witnessing right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Well, absolutely. Really a